Hi, this is Swan from Swan Amity Studios, and we are looking today at stitching using the invisible applique stitch, also known as the hidden applique stitch, or the invisible applique stitch. So lots of different ways to talk about it. They often all mean the same thing. Let's take a look at exactly what we mean by that stitch. My piece is prepped. I've used the freezer paper starch method as you have seen in some of my other videos, which means that my seam allowance is already tucked in underneath, pre-turned and ready to go. My piece has been centered on the block and pinned into place. You notice I like to use larger pins. These are silk pins and they're the red head glass pins. I like the red ones because if they fall on the floor they're a lot easier to find uh, even than the white ones especially if you have gray carpeting or anything um, white on the floor it's harder to see them. Uh, we are going to also be using number 11 Golden Glide needles from John James. I like the size 11 because they're a little thinner. I also like the John James Golden Glide because that little bit of gold on the needle really does make a difference of how the needle moves through the fabric. Um, I also think those golden eye needles are a little easier to thread than some of the other size 11 and 12 needles. Once again, because of that gold coating, it really does make it easier to slide the thread into the needle. We're working with Masterpiece from Superior Thread. And what I like about Superior Thread's Masterpiece line is that, first of all, it comes on several different little bobbins. Uh, these are the older ones. They still used paper bobbins up until a couple of years ago and now they're plastic, but that's the same thing. Don't worry about it. If you see them um, with a little plastic bobbin, that's normal. I just still have quite a few left over from the last sale that I bought them at. Uh, I'm going to be using pink today so you can see my stitches as well as possible on the blue background. Normally I would matchy-matchy to my top applique piece, so I'd be looking for a darker blue and when I move to the next block, I'd be looking for a yet a more matchy blue, a little bit more of the blue-green uh, look to match my top applique piece. We'll set those aside. Masterpiece has um, a long staple cotton, and one of the best benefits of it is that it does not tangle as easily as some other threads. So if you feel that you're one of those people you've used thread conditioner to keep your thread from tangling in the past, Masterpiece is going to help you with that. I also have a thimble ready to go. This is um, an easy to find, incredibly cheap thimble. It has a little rim on the top of it. Usually they sell for between $1.50 and $5 depending on where you are located. Um, and how easy it is to get a hold of one in your town. But they're not expensive, they're easy to find, um, and I find them both in quilting stores and in your average little crafting store as well. Uh, now, if you're a thimble enthusiast, you might also want to check out Thimbles for You from Jan Larson. This is my swan thimble because if your name is Swan, obviously you need a Swan thimble. Um, I also really like that it has this pretty little crown at the top, so I feel like a queen every time I use it. And uh, This one is done with a little garnet in the wing, extra special. And this is not one I use for applique because I tend to use the side of my finger a lot when I applique, but it's my favorite one to pull out for a little hand quilting or a little binding job. Um, also, my mother's name is Robin, so when Jan came out with her little mother Robin and her chicks in the nest, I really felt like that was one I had to have too. So you can see what Jan does with her thimbles. 
is make sure that all the edges are textured and that's really nice opportunity for extra grab. I particularly enjoy that the Robin one is covered in little beautifully filigreed leaves. Aren't those adorable? Jan is really a striking artist and um, if you're into having your thimbles match your own personality you may enjoy checking Jan out. Uh, thimbles for you and they really are. You, you'll find it very hard to choose just one. I'm going to stick with this one today just to uh, show you what's going on without too much flash in the image. And I have threaded my needle with pink and I have done my quilter's knot as you have seen in previous videos. And you might notice it's very small, but that's exactly what we're after for applique. And we're going to get started, not on a curve, not on a curve, especially not on a tight curve, unless we're working with a circle. Uh, instead, we're going to try to start on as much of an easy straightaway as possible. That's always the easiest place to begin. I'm going to bring my needle behind the project, and I'm going to come through. You can see where my needle is right there. It's very tiny. Um, and I'm coming through right up next to the applique piece. I'm actually pulling it away a little bit so you can see it. And that's the last time I'm going to be behind unless I'm tying a knot. Now I'm going to bring my needle in right behind the fold, just barely behind the fold of the fabric. In fact, if I turn it there, you can see I'm just a thread away from the fold in the seam allowance. And then I'm going to take just a very small bite of fabric. I'm actually going to show you my needle here again. Very small bite of fabric. Tiny, tiny. And I'm going to go right back down into the background fabric. Now you can see I'm in the background fabric and I'm just going to come out small bite of the background fabric. So you can see on my needle small bite of the top applique fabric, very small bite of the background fabric. And that is one stitch. Let's do that one more time with just one stitch. We're going to take just a very small bite right behind the fold. And you can see what I mean the difference is. If I come up in the fold, there's my needle in the fold. And if I took that stitch, you would be able to see that pink thread on the top of my applique piece. Instead, we want to come just behind the fold, behind the fold, which means if I were to just show it to you from the top, you wouldn't even see my needle. From behind, we're going to then take a tiny stitch into the background fabric. So once again, tiny bit of the applique piece, tiny bit of the background fabric and come out one stitch. Now there's no reason if you're comfortable with one stitch and you're on a nice big straightaway like that, that you can't take more than one. And think of it like a tunneling kind of feel in your project. You'll notice my thimble is stabilizing the base of my needle as I work like that so that I'm never pushing right against my fingers. Easy to work with and helpful. We're going to this time take three stitches. So I'm going to come into the applique fabric right behind the fold. I'm going to go down into the background fabric. I'm not going to show you this time. And I'm going to stabilize with my thumb the top fabric. Come into the top fabric tiny bite. You didn't see my needle come out through the top fabric because I wanted to stay behind the fold. And now I'm in the background fabric. And I'm using my thumb to stabilize the top fabric. My thumb also feels when the needle has come through. So I'm taking stitch number three into the background fabric. And there's my needle coming back out after stitch three. Notice how you didn't see my needle at all while I was taking those stitches. 
all the way through. And let's take a peek at the back. What does it look like from the back? See those nice tiny stitches? Now what we're aiming for is evenness. Evenness of the stitches. So if yours are not super small when you begin, that's okay. Aim for evenness of the stitch. Even lengths. And the closer you can come to being equal amounts of stitch into the applique on the top and into the background fabric on the back, the better. The more stable your project will be. So evenness of stitches and then over time make your stitches smaller and neater as you progress. And that's everything you need to know about using the blind applique stitch or the hidden or invisible applique stitch, however you want to think about that. Notice none of my stitches are visible from the top. And if I turn the piece to the side, you can kind of see the wrinkling a little bit, how the stitch works there. But I would have to pull the stitches apart for you to be able to see them from the side. So what the aim is there, I'm going to tighten that down a little bit, is for your stitches to be neat and invisible. I mentioned I would use that blue thread. Now that's in case you make a small mistake. You don't want to have to tear out stitches because you noticed a small mistake much later. The blue might cover up a small mistake. But notice if you've done your stitches right, even a bright pink thread, bright pink thread, will not show up entirely invisible along the whole edge, even from the side, when you have accomplished your stitch correctly. This has been Swan with Swan Amity Studios. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the invisible applique stitch using John James Golden Glide applique needle size 11 your choice of thimbles, plain and inexpensive, specialty, pieces of art, lots of options for you out there in the quilting world. Take your projects as far as you want them to go. Join me at swanamity.com, that's S-W-A-N-A-M-I-T-Y dot com, and check out all of the things we have to offer you, especially some of our new quilt alongs this year, and blog posts with lots of options, including the occasional free pattern. Thank you so much for watching, and happy quilting!